So thank you very much. As you just heard, that's Luke Byron Smith there. Okay, he's always a motivational, you know, artist from the United States of America. I'll be leaving his link to his iTunes there so you can get a copy for yourself. All right? He's so motivational. And you can follow him on Facebook as well and Instagram. So I'm on the journey, taking you through my journey of adversity. Oh, Christ. I hope you didn't miss week one, two, three, and four, guys. Guess what? Today is week five. And week five is the amazing, amazing topic you have been waiting for, which is what? The strategy, the A key strategies to handle what? Adversity. That's what we'll be talking about today. And how are you doing? I hope everything is doing, you know, is going well with you. And if it's not, please remain focused. Don't give up. Things can be challenging. The situation can be challenging, even with the lockdown. But be positive. Just answer this question, right? Which I asked in one of my books as well. Since worrying cannot solve the problem, then why worry? There's no point worrying, guys. Okay? Stay positive because worrying is only going to make your situation worse, going to cause you more problem. All right? So don't bother worrying about it. Just think about things that you can do to help your situation, to help you feel better, to run yourself with the right people. You know, do things that make you happy. Think about things you've done in the past that actually kept your energy high. You know, things that you've done that you make you feel happy, reflect on your successes, whether lead to a major success, just reflect on them and keep the energy going so you can even do more, all right? So today we'll be talking about eight key strategies to handle adversity. That's how I've been taking you through my journey of adversity. For those of you watching for the first time, I'm Katie Rebu. I'm the best-selling author of this awesome book, Triumph in the Midst of Adversity. I'm a life coach and I'm a strategy consultant as well. And I'm a leadership and management expert and also a publisher. So for those of you thinking about writing your book or you want to write a book, but you don't know how to start, get in touch. Because in my publishing company, I coach you on writing your book as well. Around writing your book and it's the same thing. You're not going to pay any more. Because I actually believe that there's a story within you that people out there are waiting for to be inspired by, all right? So adversity comes in different forms, if you would allow me to express it this way. It comes in different shapes, sizes, colors, and tastes. <laughs> Did you hear Katie Rebu? Oh, my goodness. He said it, adversity comes in different forms. If you would allow me to express it in this way, it comes in different shapes sizes, colors, and what taste, and also have a logo. The strategy, I can have a system design. Let me show you. It's a system, okay? You see that? It's absolute. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Oh my goodness. There are adversities and there are what? Adversities. And I actually wrote them in capital letters for you to know <laughs> what that means. However, not minding the forms in which it comes, there are key strategies that you need to triumph in adversity. Poor understanding of adversity leads to what crumbling in adversity. So many people out there now might be thinking, oh, Kate, I'm going through a lot. You don't know. I don't know what you're even saying. It's not that easy. You know, challenges are tough. Life's are, life is hard. Times are hard. I understand what you're saying. Don't, don't get me wrong. Times could be hard, but you can make it harder. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You can make your situation more difficult with the steps and the actions and the decisions that you make. That's what I'm telling you today. I'm not saying that it's rosy, it's easy, but I'm telling you that you can make your situation worse. And if you have the eight key strategies to handle adversity, life will be much easier for you. Acknowledge your adversity. That is acknowledging that the situation is not right. That is the A, right? The first and foremost is to acknowledge that something is not right or something is not going well as expected or that you have experienced something in your life that you were either scared of, uncomfortable with, shocked at, and about to weigh you down, struggling with, be it health issues, unemployment, marital crisis, failure in business, about to lose your home, lose a, loss of a loved one, of your loved ones, etc. Do not shy away from it and follow the steps below. And what's the step you're going to be following? Is the absolute, is the absolute, which is A F P D A. Yeah, S A, no, A F D A, no, A F D S A L A, yes, A F P D 
A F P D Absala that A F P that's Alpha Fostro Papa Delta Syria Alpha Lima Alpha. I think I know the you know that terminology more than spelling alphabet. So it's Absala A F P D S A L A. All right. So great. So A stands for what? Acknowledge. Acknowledge your adversity. And what is adversity, which I've defined previously? Adversity are the challenges that you go through, the difficult situations, the ill law, the bad stuff that happen in our lives, the challenges, the life struggles, all right? Those are the things we call adversity. Those things that happen in your life that make you feel, oh my God, why me? Oh Jesus, where are you? Oh, those are the things we call adversity, okay? And the F is to figure out the cause. Because if you know, you know, the cause of a problem is half solved, isn't it? So you must know the cause of a problem. If not, it will be happening repeatedly. And P is for what? Prevent it from reoccurring if possible. And D is for you to deal with it. And S is for what? Seek help. Anyway, I'm going to go with the A now. I've told you about A. I've told you about F. I've told you about P. I've told you about D, right? So the S-A-L-A, -A, I will leave that for you because we'll not be able to talk through everything. So I'll talk to you about A, D, um, A, S, A, yeah, no, D, I'll end at D, A, A, F, P, D, that's what I'm going to talk about today. And if what I talk about resonates with you and you think this is something you really need, then you will as well get a copy of the book so you can actually, not just knowing what I'm saying to you here, but actually learn, you know, how to apply this strategy. Mm -hmm. So you can learn what, how to apply this strategy. So you can apply it, you can learn it, all right? So you must recognize that something is not right or something has been become challenging or unusual. In acknowledging your adversity opens up to looking into the situation objectively. And with this leading to the next step where you can figure out the cause of the situation. Let me tell you from experience, guys, when you have a, situ a difficult situation, all right, in your life, and you just ignore it, you know there's a problem, but you just sweep it underneath the carpet, which most of us have done at some point in our lives. I won't lie to you, okay? I've been in that shoes before, so it's not just you. But the thing is that you have the opportunity to hear this now, hear me talking about it for you to what to learn, all right, and to change from your old ways, because we cannot do the same thing exactly the same way and expect a different outcome. All right, so what are we saying? Let me give an instance. You have a loss of a job, right? And you're an employer and something you really want to do. There are those people that really want to work. It's not that you are just there to pay bills. You really, this is what, what is this for you? And now you lost a job. You know what it's like for you. That would be so challenging, isn't it? Great, what we're saying is that instead of just dwelling on the problem, when you have any problem at all, whether it's job, excuse me, whether it's job loss, whether it's, um, business struggle, whether it's um, childbearing, right? What I'm saying to you today is that you must acknowledge first that hmm, there's something wrong right here. Do you understand me? You must acknowledge that, listen, Kate, this is not right. This is unusual. This is not the way it should go. Or I don't like this. It might be usual, but you don't like it. You must recognize it first. That's the number one thing you must do to what? Acknowledge, which is A. Hmm? So once you do that, it opens you up to what to opportunities for you to seek help as well. Because if you don't acknowledge there's a problem, you'll not be thinking about resolving that problem. If you believe what I'm saying, and please put under this video and say, yes, Kate. Because tell me, if you don't acknowledge, right, that you have a situation that's you are unple that is unpleasant in your life, will you be thinking of how to resolve it? You only resolve things that you think need to be corrected or to be amended or to be you know, that needs change, any area of your life that you need to work on. Those are the things you'll be telling me, oh, I'm not happy about it. If you win a lottery now, for instance, or you have a, a business and you've got a check of one million pounds, would you be worrying about it? Would you be thinking about how to solve it? You know, because it's not a problem. It's a good thing. You just can't get your money, cash it and smile and celebrate, isn't it? Great. So that's what I'm talking about. But when you have a problem, those things that will not make you celebrate, that make you cry, make you mourn, what I'm saying, when they happen in your life, you must acknowledge it. Maybe it's a bad relationship that you are in, or maybe it's your business that is not going the way you want it. Don't sweep it underneath the carpet. Don't say, mm, 
it's it's normal. Don't do that because when you do that, it will allow the situation to get to get worse. You allow the situation to do what to get worse. So we don't. Have, I'm not advising you to do that. Okay, but it's your choice what you want to do. But I believe that when you have a problem, acknowledge it. Maybe it's a relationship problem you're having, and you're just you know living in denial. I'm like you know, you're going to make the situation worse. So when you do that, you've acknowledged it. What do you do next? You now want to figure out the cost. So now for the next strategy, which is figure out the, the cost to be well implemented, it is important you ask yourself this question. Oh, really, Kate, you're good. All right, let's listen. What is this all about? That is what cost is. I personally believe that finding out the exact cost of any situation opens up a solution. Did you hear that? When the cost of an ailment is known, it opens a patient to a possible cure. And so it is in any difficult situation. Do you hear this? So my dear, don't say that your life you know, situation is just too much or your life struggles is overwhelming and you just want to you know, live with it or just ignore it or sweep it under the carpet. Yeah, you know that there's something wrong, face it. <laughs> acknowledge it, guys. You must acknowledge it. Then once you acknowledge it, you figure out the root cause, what is causing this. For instance, I talk, spoke to you about a job loss. If you lose a job, you have to be honest with yourself and ask yourself this key question. Okay, what must have caused this job loss? Especially if it's not like, or oh, people where, you know, the company, you know, closed up and you were asked to all go home. No, you just receive a resignation letter, no, um, um, examination letter of your appointment. You must ask yourself, why did this happen? It's not a time to be judgmental, to be real. Okay, could it be those times you were coming late or could it be, you know, something you were asked to do, a tax you were given recently, you felt you didn't do well your manager, that your manager spoke to you about? Or is it, was it about your response to a query? You have to face it, guys. You need to do this. You must find out what the root cause is. Because if you don't find out what the root cause is and you just say, oh, it's one of those things, and you move on to another job, what's going to happen again? You're going to receive another termination letter. That is what happened. Because you don't spend the time to actually ask yourself, what is the cause of this problem? Because if you don't find out the root cause, you will not solve it. You may, you, the, the problem remains what? Unresolved. And it's going to reoccur <laughs> because that's what it does. You have to find out, first of all, you know, acknowledge it, figure out what the root cause is, then you can move to the step three. If you don't pass through the step A and step B, trust me, if you are there who have been through adverse situations in your life or you're a human being, just tell me now, thinking about the situations you've passed, you know, you've experienced in your past. And tell me realistically and honestly and sincerely that case, I did not do this. And now I actually saw, you know, so we I, made, I, I went wrong. I must tell you this, this strategies has been tested and I can indeed tell you that it works, all right? And it doesn't just work for unemployment issues or marital crisis, it works for what? All adversities. That is the fantastic thing about this strategy. Hi, by the way, kids, how did you get this kind of strategy that works for everything, all adverse situations? Oh my goodness, I must be honest with you. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit. What do you expect? A book title that was given by, the, by God. God that said, write a book called Triumph in the Midst of Adversity. Even though I was that stubborn, you know, disobedient child that didn't listen, I wanted to pursue my own career, my own goal. I ignored this book from 2007. I didn't think about writing. I even forgot about the title at some point. I decided to write it. And I asked God for mercy. What are you expecting this book to look like? Are you surprised? <laughs> Don't be surprised. God had given this book because he knew from the, from, you know, God knows the end world from the beginning. He knew already about COVID-19. He knew about everything that's going to happen this way. He knew that you need this book. So don't crumble in your adversity, guys. Run with the eight key strategies in this book and do what, what to do and what to avoid. Read it there. I don't know if you can see it here. What you must do and avoid to overcome any situation. You need this book, guys. For the fact that the NHS is free, you can run there, you can call the ambulance, you don't pay a penny. Does not mean you have to take eight key strategies 
to overcome your difficulty or to handle your challenges for granted, guys. If you were paying £1,000 before you actually see a doctor, no, 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 be honest here, guys. If you were paying £1,000 before you see a GP, right? Then you pay for prescription. Then if you want to call an ambulance, you pay £2,000 before an ambulance will come. You tell me. We do not buy this book. Now it's £19.99 on Amazon. We do not buy it. And the audio is £19.99 on my website as well www.triumphinthemisofadversity.com. Tell me whether you will not buy it. Guys, be real to yourself. You need to love yourself. The NHS cannot love you more than you love yourself, all right? Even though the NHS is free that you can run there anytime, do you know that when you go down the route of depression, you don't get back from it within 24 hours. But if you can read this book and build the right mindset, which I have that's been helping me to handle difficult situations for those who know me, all right, and who follow me on social media and know about my, my life challenges, right? You will understand what I'm talking to you about. This book, by the grace of God, have not allowed me to crumble in adversity. And I'm turning adversities to triumph. It's not a place for you to remain. When you overcome your adversity, just like when you take an exam, when you start passing exam, passing exam, passing your exams, what happens? You graduate. <laughs> you, you, they will say, man, you know what? <laughs> Take it. You have all the quality, you know, just free access for you. You have passed all your exams. Now you can move to the school of success and you remain there. When you pass through the school of failure, you can graduate from the school of hardship, of, of adversity. Then you can handle the adversity that will come with success. Now, some of you out there, life has been so rosy for you. You have a fantastic job, fantastic business. But tomorrow, if you hear the news that you don't want to hear and that anything happens and that business crumble you will not be able to start life. That is what I'm saying. So that means you have not equipped yourself. All the Gucci bag, all this bag that you're buying, listen, it's not going to resolve this problem. The problem this book, which is only, you know, 19 pounds, 99 can resolve for you, your Gucci bag will be there and you'll be swelling, having swollen eyebrows in your mind. So why don't you build the right strategy? Learn and build your mind and see people who have been through difficult situations, not just Kate Rebu. So people will say, Kate, everyone is not like you. Don't tell me that. I'm not supernatural, guys. I'm a human being living on this earth with you, flesh and blood. So if I can build it, you can do the same. Stop making excuses for yourself. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Grab a copy and help yourself. And so you can become a guru in overcoming adversity. So you can turn your difficulties or your, your, your stumbling blocks to, to what? To step in stone to your success. That's what you must do. Don't feel sorry for yourself because it's not going to help you. It's not, if it's going to help you, I will tell you. It's not going to help you and I can't lie because everything I tell you on this channel, I'll be accountable for on the last day. Seriously. So please help yourself, all right? With the AK strategy and stop crumbling in adversity. The NHS door is open doesn't mean you have to take it for granted and leave yourself loose. Just help yourself. Learn it from today and tell me, say, Kate, you are right. Since I read this book, look at how I, I behave now. Look at the way I handle challenges. Look at the way I see opportunities and difficulties. That is what you must do. People are blind to opportunities when you focus on the challenge and you don't have the right strategies to handle it. It, it becomes overwhelming for people. Don't, don't get into that group. Don't get into that category. Oh, you are down. Yes, you're down because you fail to take advantage of someone who went through adverse situations, sibling, rival, and hate, unemployment issues that led to financial struggle, uh, uh, betrayal by close friends. I've been through, you know, several situations, health, complex health, health issues. What are you talking about, Kate? Wow. <laughs> complex health issues. You know, with my twin daughters, and they're feeling that going through, you know, several discrimination, you know, while I was waiting for my residency and all that, all that I've been through, and I shared it, opened up to you and shared it with you to help you go through your situation. And I've told you, this strategy doesn't work for just one thing. I've tested it and, and, and I used it to apply all the situations I've been through and it's working. So why don't you test the strategy that have been tested? Why don't you work with it? Run with it, guys. I'm telling you now, run with it, okay? So then now you cannot prevent it from reoccurring. So it is some, if it's, is this something that needed urgent attention or not? That's another question you must ask yourself or prevent it from reoccurring. Then what is it I needed to do and how? Then what is it in, what is the need for me? You see why I ask this question? 
Because when you see a difficult situation sometimes, it might come out as something bad, but don't let the, the sight of it just overwhelm you and your chroma start you know, losing focus. Sometimes it might surface as something bad, but look inward. You know, look at it, you know, carefully. You might see that, you know, it's, it's, it's as comfort for something good. Who knows? So that is what you must do in your difficulty. All right. Now I'm going to share with you another last one. But before I, I share that with you, I want to ask you, did you see my birthday special dance? I, if you did, I want to see what you think. Leave it underneath the video where you watched it, my special birthday dance that I did to show appreciation to my lovely Indian fans. They won 2020. I'm not sure it's going to win 2021. And I'm not sure yet what I'm going to be doing to appreciate the ones I'll be winning for this year. But I want to say thank you so much for all your support. For those of you who have been watching, if you are still watching up to this minute, that means you know you are one of my great supporters. Thank you so much. I love you so much. Mm. I'm going to be telling you something by next week. I'll leave it as a secret to next week, okay? So what am I saying? Listen, guys, I just said to you that if you have watched my video for my special dance, it's on this channel as well, okay? Kate said, uh, baby special dance. Watch it and tell me what you think. My Indian customer actually said to me, you, some of our Indian people cannot even dance like you. You are a good, good dancer. I said, really? Okay, great. So that's his own comment. But you, I want to know what you think by you, you know, from your own end. All right. One of my uh, uh, followers on Facebook and friends have actually commented, "I'm an Indian queen." Really? <laughs> that's good. I'm encouraged because that does really made me feel good. All right. Thank you, guys. So look for something that make you feel happy. Just be yourself. Because some people don't want to be themselves because they are thinking of what someone will say. Who cares? It's my life. Honestly. <laughs> provided what I'm doing does not offend God. That's what. That's only what I think about. If you don't like it, what I'm doing, I'm not hurting you. I'm not stepping on your toe. Those are the things that I worry about. The what I do to make myself happy, I don't really worry about what you think about it. But for now, I want to know what you think about my dance. <laughs> All right? So it's great. So now deal with it. What is in it for you, which I've told you, you must know what is in that situation for you because it's not always bad, 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 all right? In a difficult situation, might be there's an opportunity that is hidden in that situation. So you need to be careful and, and ensure that you don't just get overwhelmed by that situation, all right? Great, fantastic. Are you enjoying it? And are you getting the study the absolute strategy? If you are enjoying it, let me know. And if you are not, let me know if you need have any question as well. Please ask me on that in this video. Be rest assured that we come back and I'll respond to you. All right. Thank you for watching. All right. Thank you so much. And also, just let me know what you think about this dress. Let me know what, what you think. All right. About this dress. Thank you. So deal with it. Dealing with adversity is something that is advisable. But how you deal with it is is crucial to the outcome and therefore must be carefully decided. For me, I deal with adversity with a winner mindset. What did I say? A winner mindset. And what is a winner mindset? A winner mindset is the mindset you have even when you are still in a difficult situation, when the problem is still unresolved. You are in that situation, but you are seeing the end, a glorious end. Oh, Rekabasha. As a child of God, I must say I'm so blessed. As a, as a Christian, as a child of, not just a Christian going to church, because I know the God I said, I'm so blessed to have the kind of God that I'm serving, which is the almighty God. But also, I must tell you there are people who are not Christians as well, but they understand these strategies I'm talking about, all right? So don't be a child of God and lose, you know, the opportunity that is supposed to be much easier for you because of your faith. If people who have a different faith come, enjoy this kind of privilege, then you must be able to embrace it quicker because this is what the Bible teaches you as well. Okay? So great. So I deal with adversity with a winner mindset. The number one thing I do is to pray. Did you hear that? And sometimes with fasting, as I believe that the spiritual controls the physical. My dear, I can't separate myself from God. <laughs> you know? So anything I do, God must be inside of it because my life is about God. I believe I'm a child of destiny. So 
if you're someone of a different faith and you didn't expect to hear that here, just understand that eh, Kate is just that child that is the apple of God's eye. So when God, you know, is in anything I do, don't get offended because I can't, I, I'm just talk with God. And I love this God so much that I can't do without him, okay? After that, I ask myself the key questions of what this is about and what is the best way to deal with it. I ensure I put in my best. Okay, hold on guys. My best in dealing with my difficulties instead of living in denial and pushing it under the carpet. Some may prefer to ignore and might escalate. Do you want to leave your situation to escalate? Do you have a little wound that you can just buy plaster from the pharmacy or even a, the pan shop and put on it and it heals quickly? And you leave it open and you allow, maybe you are in a climate where there are flies, the life flies to patch it, a life open it to infection and it get bigger and get bigger and you not want to go and spend money to go to the hospital to treat it. This is what many of us out there are doing to our difficulties. You have a small problem which you, you ignored it, you swept it underneath, this carpet, under, underneath the carpet and you made your situation worse. And now you are crumbling in your adversity. So please, if you have done that in the past, Fair enough, but now you can change your ways. You can learn from this and move forward. I don't want to see anyone saying, Kate, I'm suffering from depression. Oh, Kate, I'm down. Help with this book. Before you, I'm not a therapist. So when you get to that level, I will not be able to help you. But when you are going through a difficult time, I'm here for you, all right? Before you get to the stage where you have to be depressed, we can stop depression. This is an antidepressant. This is not a book to help you with depression, but it's what is an anti what depressant. So before your, your situation gets to where you have to be suffering from, you know, depression or losing your mind, that is when I advise you to grab this book and love it <laughs> and kiss it. Mm, this book is, <laughs> this book, even as the author of this book, I read this book. And whenever I read it, if I read it 10 times, the 20th time, my dear, it's powerful. I'm not just saying it because I'm the author and God bears me witness. This book is powerful. If you are here living on this planet Earth and you have not read Triumph in the midst of adversity, my goodness, you are just denying yourself or something that is so big unknown to you. And I must tell you, it must be ignorant. So please get your copy and read. And if you get your copy and read this book and you do not have a shift in your mindset, you do not get, you feel you know, it's not worth your time, please get in touch with me and I will transfer the money back to your account. Is that is I'm serious. I'm telling you, don't deny yourself of this book. If you are one of those who we are lucky to have access to read this book on my birthday, and you are sitting there looking at it as one of those books that people write and share a link because they want to get leads. I didn't write this book to get leads. I wrote this book to help you to overcome your difficulties so that the, the struggles I've been through for several years, so you can go through yours quicker and smoother. Don't wait until you get into the hospital that you cannot even remember what your name is. Read this book now that you think life is tough, yeah? All you things are pretty good for you and equip yourself. Because if I've got these strategies, you know, handy much earlier, when God said, write this book, Triumph in the Midst of Adversity, if I hack into that voice in 2007 and wrote this book, then you must be rest assured that I would have triumphed even faster than I knew it. But don't be a, a disobedient child like myself that I was in the past because I've repented. So you now repent and get your copy and triumph even faster than myself. All right? Fantastic. So now I said some may prefer to ignore and, esca and might escalate. So for me, dealing with adversity as much as I can, and if it is something that is not hindering you in any way, then you might then leave things the way they are. Why am I saying this? There's a, a lady who was living in my mother's company years ago. She said she had a sister who had, you know, some, you know, pain in her leg that comes. It's not over every time, but occasionally she had pain in her leg. So when the school was on strike, she went home. She lives in worry, and the sister went for a surgery, and then she she lost her life during that surgery. So what am I saying? And before I even go to what I'm saying, I just want to say for people who are out there who are surgeons abroad, please find ways to go back to Nigeria. Because I can see that a lot of deaths, lives, you know, that have been lost in Nigeria is due to surgery. 
We lack experts in this field. We need more hands, more, we need good surgeons in Nigeria. So please, if you are watching this video, please share it. Share it to your friends who are practicing medicine in any part of the world. You can never know who will be practicing tomorrow, even if they are not practicing now. Because I'm really looking, for, I'm really, really looking forward to having you know surgeons and Nigerians who have practiced abroad to relocate home to help in this aspect. My lecturer, uh, Doctor Owampo, died after a surgery. You know, so many people who have told me that the the family member in Nigeria has surgery, or they always die. I don't know why. Please, I believe it's because we don't have good hands, enough of good hands back home. Not say I don't know why. I do know why now. I have an idea. This is, the, this is the, the situation back home. We need good surgeons, all right? We need them. So please, if you can, you know, the government can actually recruit surgeons back home and give them, you know, a, a enabling environment so that they can come home to practice. It will be fantastic. We have other experts, you know, in the different fields, but we, I know for sure that surgeons, we need more of them. We might need others as well, but for surgeons, we believe we need one. And also, what is happening to Igbobi Hospital? If anybody have an idea, please leave a comment here. We referred, you know, a family friend there some time ago, and the problem they could not solve in South Africa was solved at Igbobi Hospital. And funny enough, I don't hear this in the news. I don't hear this in the news, and I actually want to know what's happening in Igbobi Hospital before I actually visit that hospital and know what's happening. Please hint me because I'm still here in the UK. I'm not in Nigeria yet, all right? Hint me. I want to know what is happening to that hospital because as far as I'm concerned, that hospital need a building in the state of the art where people will be flying from America, from London, from Spain, from back to Nigeria for treatment because the treatment that they, they, they can take care of in that hospital, oh my goodness. Even to, you know, to even convince this family friend to go there, it was, he was still you know, pressing on him on what he believed. He said, listen, I've gone to the best hospital in South Africa. They said they cannot help me. I have to live with this. They asked me to stay on the wheelchair until you know, God called me. I said, what are you talking about? Go to this hospital, man. You know, they will help you. And indeed, he went and it's fine now. He's working on his feet again and he actually traveled back again abroad. So what am I saying? We must, you know, make use of what we have. We have experts abroad. We need to find our way home to help our country as well. And the government should encourage this by, you know, creating an enabling environment and actually inviting them back home as expatriates to come and live in their own country. If you have to employ them as expat, do that because we, the rate at which people are dying back home is just too much. All right, great. So some way, some may prefer to ignore. Uh, okay, I've said that earlier. So some. For me, dealing with adversity is as much as I can. And if it's something that is not hindering you in any way, just as I said about that, my, my mother's tenant whose sister was having pain in the leg. Sometimes you have some minor pain, but if you know that the procedure that is required to resolve you know, a concern that you have that is not really bothering you, what would you do? You leave it, isn't it? So that is what it is sometimes for some challenges that you might have. Some things are a bit challenging, but you know that it's not stopping you. It's not really doing you any harm, you know, just like this hair now. It's disturbing me and it's coming to my front of my face. It's covering my face, but it's not really harming me. So I can take it off when I come. But if I cannot, what should I do? i leave it, okay? So there are some things in your life that, you know, shouldn't really bother with, but they're not going to cause any harm. They are not, you know, escalating to anything else, you know, and it's something you, you're really living with and it's not denying you of anything. I don't know how much I can explain that again, but I just want to make it as simple as you can. As I use the, uh, my mother's tenant's uh, uh, sister's leg, you know, maybe sometimes, maybe for instance, you have a little pain in your finger now, you know, it's paining you sometimes when you touch it, but it's not that it's stopping you from moving your hand. It's not stopping you from eating, all right? It's not stopping from your nails from growing, but just that when you touch it, it hurts you. And now you've been told that for it to be corrected, you need to cut your hand open, you know, cause a lot of procedures, all those procedures to just stop this little pain. What will you do? You know that it's not worth it. You know what I mean? So this is what you should apply also in this absolute strategy, okay? So this is where um, the next one here we're gonna be doing now is this. And also, also why dealing with the situation at hand? Do not forget that you can still triumph in your advice. Oh my God, this is the part that I love most. Why dealing with your adversity? Also realize 
or be aware that you can also what triumph in your adversity, which is the title of this book. Oh my goodness, this is interesting. It's getting even more interesting now. Okay, great. So do not wait until your difficulties are over before you triumph as learning how to triumph in adversity is the way forward. As we humans are prone to what? Challenges. Tell me what you think about what you just heard, guys. This is the reality of life. If you are living on the surface earth, right? Living on this earth, we are standing like this. You are embracing this air in, you need this. You need what? You need this. Because it's unfortunate. People don't realize that, oh, things can change in life. There was a time in my life, if you tell me about eight key strategies, I would say, what do I need it for? Life is just pretty cool for me. Oh my goodness. I just enjoy my life, you know, thinking about when, where I'm going on holiday next, what to do. You know, those are the things I'm th thinking about, not about strategy to overcome adversity. But just imagine, you know, if I had it earlier, where I would be now. So my dear, life can be challenging, but please don't crumble in your adversity because there's a way out for you. How you perceive it, how you see it, how you, you know, you, 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 you take it, the decision you make, the action you take all add up to what? To the outcome that you get from your challenging situations. So that is what I want. I'm just here to tell you today that in life, you know, difficult times will come, whether major or minor. Just, we just have to be real here. We are humans. Forget about, you know, the fact that we do makeup, nine say do clothes, you know, you can even drive, a, 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 you know, the best car. That doesn't stop you to, you know, from, you know, going through any difficulties. Like for instance, now Richard Branson lost the mom recently. A mom is old, but you know, Richard Branson, I believe is a mommy's boy. He might just be there now, you know, you know, worrying about the mom there. But I believe that Richard Branson's mom actually lived as well. So I believe, you know, the life that the mother live is what will be encouraging him at this moment. I believe that's what he's doing. But for you out there who, you know, don't know how to, you know, gather yourself together and take the positivity from the situation and the strategy to handle the challenging part of your life, you must learn from this, okay? Don't crumble, guys. Don't crumble. I'm not, I hope I'm not standing to you there as a superwoman or because some people have actually said, Kate, you're just, I don't, I can't just believe how you are doing this, doing that with your daughter. I am not. Honestly, I am not. I'm not a superwoman. I don't believe so because you can do exactly the same. All you need to do is a shift in your mindset. So if you're watching me today and you really do need someone to help to coach you around your life struggles, then I'm the right person you should contact because we are all life coaches there, but when you have a life coach with first-hand experience, then you are in a better hand, all right? So that's what I'm gonna say to you. Or you are someone that is really, really challenged with your confidence then you, you can get in touch with me. Or you want to coach somebody, a coach who can coach you and guide you because you are that type of person, you say, oh, I'll do it, but you don't really, you are not really accountable, you know? You can't really, you know, follow up with your goal setting and action plan to achieve a goal. Then I'm the right person you, you should be contacting to, coach, to be your coach, all right? Because that's what you need. There's nothing wrong with you. If you think you are doing it by yourself and you have not actualized those goals, then you need help, all right? Because it would be, you know, it would be insane for someone to be doing the same thing exactly the same way and you're expecting a different outcome. Yes, you heard me right. Yes, I said it, you should be, you know, it would be only someone, it would be only someone who is insane that would do something the same way Exactly the same thing, the same way, and expect a different outcome. I believe as human, you must know your strength and your weakness, which I do. If you know your strength and your weakness, then you will not be shy or afraid to ask for help. It's even, you know, self-confidence for you to actually know your weaknesses and your strengths and not be ashamed to ask for help. Because sometimes it's lack of confidence that make people not to say, oh, yeah, I can't ask, oh no, they will think. What, do you, what will people think? If you don't ask for help, the situation did not change. You are still the same, going through the same thing, still struggling with it. It doesn't make sense, all right? It doesn't make sense. Get help where you need help. Learn to invest in yourself. I was sharing with a business colleague the other day and a, and a fellow coach 
about the 11 tips of Warren um, Buffett to, for you to su success, for, for you to be successful in life and in business. And when I looked through it, mm, I was quite in, you know, encouraged, all right? Because you have to check yourself. You need to know whether you are doing the right thing, the areas you need to work on, you know, and what you need to do to better yourself. Because if you want the best for yourself, then you must invest what? In yourself. If you're just there and you're thinking, no, Kate, I'm all right, I'm okay. Things will change at the right time. You just lie to yourself there. And in this book, one thing you must not do is for you not to lie to yourself. Be real to yourself. Stop living in denial. If you have a problem in your relationship, acknowledge there's a problem, resolve it. Don't think you want to sweep it under the table because one day it will escalate and it will go, <laughs> it's interesting guys so that is what i do and that is what this book teaches me and this is what it can teach you as well and i hope you enjoyed the show and please subscribe to this channel i can't say this enough please subscribe to kate o show we really need your subscription here please i need your subscription please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and share with your friends okay share so that they can learn what you are learning as well because you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with. Honestly, no matter how you learn and equip yourself, if you have people around you who, who are not learning what you are learning, my God, very soon you need a different, you know, click. That's a fact. Because what you'll be doing is that they'll be dragging you backward. So now don't watch this alone. Watch it with your friends. So when you need help and you meet people around you, you will not be getting wrong advice, all right? My dear, have you not got a coach? If anyone here watching does not have a coach, please just consider about, you know, about it. You need a coach. You need a coach so you can be accountable, all right? To your goals and all that. So somebody that can actually help you and see that you're actually taking the steps that you need to take to get you from where you are to where you want to be. All right, I want to say thank you so much for watching and I'm going to leave you now. Thank you. So where is our darling um, Liz Byron Smith again? Let's end it the way we started as well, guys. That's it. Let's end it the way we started, guys. Look, Baron Smith, thank you so much for giving me, you know, right to your songs. Four songs, four, 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 four. No, it's four. I <laughs> love four. Let me try some steps here. I choose happiness. What do you choose, guys? Write it underneath this video. What do you choose? What do you choose? I choose happiness. Please get to iTunes. I'll be leaving the link underneath this video so you can get Louis Barrel Spin motivational songs that are very, very, you know, great for me and for you. Good for you. That's it. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Happiness. I choose happiness. What do you choose, guys? I choose happiness. I choose happiness. Yes, I choose happiness. This guy is too much. Look, Baron Spin, you are too much. God bless you. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave you now. Please subscribe, okay? Subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. And I love you lots as always. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's it.
That's my brother. <laughs>